Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll talk about a new topic, which is genomics and proteomics. So let's get started. So what is genomics? So before understanding what is genomics, so let's just get through what it is made about or what it is stands about. So you can see a biochemical context of genomics and proteomics on your screen. So you can see the DNA gene here, which gets transcribed into RNA and after that through translation, it gets converted to proteins and from proteins through enzymatic reactions, we can extract different metabolites. So this entire process we are on, we are most of us are familiar with. All right. So the process from DNA to RNA is called transcription and from RNA to protein is called translation. And from protein, you there are different methods you can say as enzymatic reactions or any other reaction which from which we can extract the metabolites. So from here you can see the corresponding points such as genomics, the transcriptomics, the proteomics, and the metabolomics. So these are the biochemical contexts related to genomics and proteomics. So the functional genomics includes the transcriptomics and proteomics. So leaving behind the genomics or the beginning of genomics. So what it is uh, all about. So DNA. So the starting material is always DNA. We always start off with a piece of DNA. All right. So which is genomics. So always starting material remains DNA. And from DNA, we try to convert it either into RNA or in any case, we start off with always a piece of DNA. So this is a part of genomics. So genomics always starts from a piece of DNA. So after we extract a piece of DNA, we convert it into RNA in most cases and thereby we convert it into proteins. So the conversion into RNA and proteins come under functional genomics. All right. So under functional genomics, we have transcriptomics. So transcriptomics is just the translation or transcriptation or translation from DNA to RNA and RNA to proteins. And protein after we get that, so the protein is uh, thereby used in different ways. So that comes under proteomics. So overall, the functional genomics consists of transcriptomics and proteomics. And later on, we have a section known as metabolomics, which is metabolites and thereby the metabolites are utilized by different organisms as well. So talking about the main function of genomics. So in this video, we'll discuss only about genomics. And in the coming videos, we'll discuss more about genomics as well as proteomics. So the genomics consists of three main uh, structures or three main pillars, which is the structural genomics. So we have comparative genomics and we have functional genomics. So we just saw functional genomics, what it is. So it is basically the transcriptomics and proteomics. So it's the combination of transcriptomics and proteomics. Structural geno uh, genomics and comparative genomics will go through. So moving, uh, so before moving to the details, so let's get through the uh, small, very brief history about the genomics, which marked the beginning of a new age in biology and medicines. So it all started with Mendel, uh, who discovered the science of genetics, or also known as father of genetics, as we all know. So it all started in 1900s. Then we move on to Watson and Crick, who developed the double standard. Uh, st helical structure of DNA. Then we move on to the Sanger and Gilbert who derive methods of sequencing. So DNA sequencing that we know about or most of us know about. So it's a very important method developed by Sanger and Gilbert. Thereby we move to DNA markers which were used to map human diseases genomes to chromosomal regions. Thereby we move on to now human genome projects which is HGP which begins an international effort to map and sequence all the genes in the human genome. So it helps to integrate all the genes that are present in a human into a single library or a human genome. Thereby we move to the genetic and physical mapping and thereby the DNA markers used to map human diseases genes. And thereby working different draft of human genome sequencing completes release of human gene uh, human genome project so basically the entire process you can see so there's a common point in this which is the sequencing so the dna sequencing uh, has been emphasized strongly in the development of genomics as you can see so the sequencing lays a very important part whereas for humans as well as in animals so you can see a different project name also which is human genome project which is 
specifically used for humans as the name suggests. So this is what the history lies about in the genomics. So talking about the three levels of genome research. So there are different levels of research. So which is the names are pretty much the same as the pillars of genomics, but the criteria is pretty much different. So the first pillar is the structural genomics, then we have functional genomics and then we have comparative genomics. So in the structural genomics what happens is uh, mapping of genes are, happens thereby DNA sequencing and sequence annotations. So mapping of genes, gene sequencing and annotations all of that occurs in the structural genome genomics. Moving to the functional genomics. So in the functional genomics, what happens is expression profiling, we have transcriptomics, proteomics, analysis of mutants. So these are the prime importance of functional genomics. And in comparative genomics, we basically compare the structural and the functional genomics, which one gives us the better result. So moving with that, what is genomics in simple words? So basically, genomics is generation of genome sequences. Also, it's the identification of genes. We have identification of promoters, transcripts, splicing. We have categorization of expression patterns. We have assigning function to genes. So this is the simple work of genomics. So why do we need genomics and what is genomics? So it's just the identification of different parts of a gene and assigning functions to that particular genes. So talking about the genome, uh, genomics integration with five traditional areas of genomic, uh, genetics. So genomics lays a very important part in the field of genetics. So genomics, what it does, it integrates five pillars of genetics, which is the Mendelian genetics. So Mendelian genetics, I hope everyone is uh, aware of. We have cytogenetics, we have molecular genetics, we have population genetics, we have quantitative genetics. So all these areas of field of genetics are uh, integrated together under genomics. So how does genomics differ from genetics? So there must be a difference to why we are studying about genomics other than genetics. So there's a difference which says we have five points of difference which is focus on complete DNA sequences. So it starts off with DNA sequences and from there we try to analyze the DNA sequences and try to identify different regions of the DNA and thereby uh, continue our process. We have computation analysis, we use different software, we use different tools available on our PC, on our desktop, so where we can analyze a piece of DNA. We use multi-gene approach, so there are different sort of approaches that are available under genomics through which we can analyze that particular uh, gene of interest. Also we use computation and experimental approaches. Along with that, we do not address biological or phenotypic questions directly. So we do not address biological or phenotypic questions directly without analyzing the piece of DNA. So this is how uh, the uh, genomics is different from genetics. So let's just keep this video till here. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll be back with another set of videos regarding genomics and proteomics. So keep watching and thanks for watching.